Welcome to UC Improvement Academy. Setting the right measures is essential for any improvement activity, especially when transitioning from the understanding phase to the continuous improvement phase. Measures help us quantify the problem, set appropriate goals for the project, and track the impact of our change efforts. Let's take an example. If you are trying to lose weight, how will you know if your change is leading to improvement? Measures will help do that. They are of three categories, outcome, process, and balancing measures. An outcome measure is what you want to achieve and what matters to you the most. In this example, the outcome measure is going to be your weight that you will monitor perhaps every week. Outcome measures are what matters to the end users of the process. In healthcare, the end user is most often the patients, but it can also be staff, trainees, or other people in the system. Outcome measure will be tracked throughout the project and should be agreed upon by all stakeholders. When possible, Use an existing measure that is well established in the literature or the medical community. Process measures are things that you do to change the outcome. These are key proximal steps that impact the outcome. In the weight loss example, it could be daily calorie intake, number of steps per day, or time spent exercising each day. These are things you do to achieve an outcome and are under your direct control of change. You also need balancing measures. These are things that can go wrong or get compromised due to your change efforts. Perhaps eating healthy is costly and can break your budget. Daily exercise is reducing time spent with the family or injuries that can happen from exercise. These are the undesirable effects that you want to be mindful of and manage along the way. Now let's move to a healthcare example. The ICU team wants to reduce CARTIs, which are urine tract infections related to use of Foley catheters. CARTIs lead to poor patient outcomes and high cost. How will the ICU team know if their change efforts are leading to improvement? That's where the family of measures come in. In this case, the outcome measure is what the ICU team really wants to improve. There are multiple ways to define this. It could be the number of CARTIs per month, this is simple and to the point. However, this will be impacted by changes in ICU patient volumes each month. The ICU team can choose CARTIs per thousand catheter days as their outcome measure. And this is the industry standard for CARTI measures. Another way to measure could be the days between CARTI events. Days between events is a good way to track things that don't occur very frequently. As stated earlier, Process measures are key proximal steps or interventions that will change this outcome. The ICU team decided on the following process measures. Number one, number of Foley catheters that are kept in place every day for inappropriate indications. Number two, adherence to daily Foley care provided by the nurses. In many cases, a way to track process measures is not readily available. Data collection may start in simple manual ways at the start of the project. You will learn much more this way. You will continue to refine the definition of the measure and then move on to embed the data collection process within the daily workflow. Try to keep it simple. Process measures may change over the course of the project as you test new interventions over time or find new opportunities to improve outcomes. As a balancing measure, the ICU team decided to track the number of times a Foley catheter had to be reinserted after it's taken out. This way they can track if their change efforts are leading to premature removal of the Foley's or unintended downstream impact. For all measures, you need a method of how this data will be collected, who will collect it, and how will it be reported. The data collection process typically requires extra work in the beginning of the project, but over the course of the project, this process needs to be made easy, automated when possible, and reliable. Remember, don't delay improvement activities waiting for data collection to be perfected. In some projects, multiple interventions are needed to work together to improve the outcome. These are often referred to as bundles. All bundle components can be considered individual process measures. Adherence to a bundle can be measured by each component separately 
or all components combined together such as percentage of the bundle components completed. Another way is an all or none measure. This means that the adherence is only counted when all bundle components are completed. Remember, when you are embarking on an improvement journey, make sure to set the right measures. This include outcome, process, and balancing measures and develop a strategy to track them to know that change is an improvement. Now get out there and make the world a better place.